This morning, I just want to share a few things with you, then uh, the, the band's going to come up and share a closing song. Again, I, I want to uh, say the same thing that Matthew said. Welcome, 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 welcome to Spirit of God Fellowship. We're so glad you are here on this last Sunday of 2018. Can you believe it? This morning, we're talking about the will of God. You ever think about the will of God? What's the will of God for me? I, I think we, we, we think about it, but we don't think about it a lot. I, I want to say this to you, you're, whether you're a visitor here or if you've been here all your life. God has a place for you where you can be at your very, very best for him. I'm going to say that again. God has a place for you that you can be at your very best for him. Now, how many of you know that along the way, we sometimes take detours before we find that place? So this morning is about the road ahead. This is a family meeting. I just want to talk about the road ahead for this church, 2019. But sometimes we have to look back. It was March of 1990. And the phone rang. How many of you know when the phone rings and it's after midnight, it's never good news? Phone rang, it's after midnight, I picked it up. It's my brother-in-law. Brian, you better get over here. Your dad's having a heart attack. Get over here quick. It takes about 15 minutes to get from South Holland to, to Lansing. I was there in less than 10 minutes. When I got there, my dad was on the ground and the Paramedics were there, and stuff was all over the place. My mother sitting on the chair. They had just pronounced him dead. They had received permission from the hospital, evidently, legally. They have to do these things, and they had received permission from the hospital to pronounce him dead, and that's when I walked in. But there was a paramedic there by the name of Pete Krillich. Pete had known my dad, Mel, as he called him, for many years. Pete Krillich stood up and said, Mel is not dying tonight. We're going to hit him again. It's a true story. Took the paddles, hit him again. They got a pulse, stabilized him. They took him to Munster Community Hospital, where he survived a double massive heart attack and lived another 12 wonderful years. Now, years earlier, my dad went to college with a couple guys by the name of Jay Van Andel and Rich DeVos. You may have heard of these guys. After college, they started a little business called Amway. And as a matter of fact, that's why we invited you here this morning. <laughs> Shut the doors. <laughs> My dad got into the Amway business after college. He was the 133rd distributor in the Amway business. He was very successful. He loved the business, devoted his heart and his soul to that business. And he was on a, a mission to, to get me in the Amway business. You ever get one of those calls? And I, I just resisted. It just wasn't for me. I just, re, just, just didn't want to do it until after that heart attack. Something changed. So a few months after his heart attack, my sister called and said, Brian, we need help. Dad needs help. We need you to help me. So I, I jumped into the business. I jumped in with both feet. I did meetings every night. I, I started building my own Amway business, and I started taking over his business. And after a while, God had blessed it, and, and, and my dad was so proud. And with his support, I started taking over his business also. My business was growing, and I earned an award. And I was going to then walk across the stage at Amway headquarters in Ada, Michigan to receive this award. And my proud father and mother and sister were going to be there to see me get this award. So I got in my car to drive the three hours to Amway. That morning, John Sullivan, our pastor, said, hey, here's a tape. Listen to this tape. I know you got a long ride. Listen to this tape. It was a tape by a guy named Tony Kemp Hollow. So I got in my car for the three-hour drive. I put the cassette tape in my car, 
You remember the cassette tape? And it was not Tony Campalo speaking to me. It was God. I listened to that tape three times. By the time I got to Amway, Ada, Michigan, I knew God was radically changing the course of my life. The tough part was I had to tell my dad that not only could I not receive that award, but I had to leave. Now, I was very careful how I said it. He did his best to understand. And then I got back in my car and I cried the whole way home. I said, God, are you kidding me? I'm honoring my dad. I, I'm, I'm in, I, I, I thought this was the center of your will. You're blessing the business. It's all going good. Why can't I be in this business? And I clearly heard the Lord say to me, some can, you can't. It's not a place for you where you can be at your very best. And so I obeyed and I waited. Three months later, I got a call from my friend, Jim Oberman, and he said to me, hey, I'd like you to come to work for me in this bank card business, <laughs> this credit card business. Boy, am I glad I obeyed, and boy, I'm glad that Jim called. It's been a good 25 plus years in the bank card business. God changed my road in business. He changes our road in business. He changes our road in Spiritual life, he changes our road. Can I, can I get any man? He changes our road. He puts us in the place where we can be our very best for him. John Sullivan, the first pastor, our founder, was on a road. He didn't know what he wanted to do, so he went to the Army. Went to the Army for two years. Got out of the Army, and he thought, oh, I'll go to college. All my friends are going to college. I'll go to college. And he decides he wants to be a dentist. He has one class, it's a biology class, and in the biology class, he meets this, this young lady named Barbara. Now, Barb got an A in that class, of course. John got an F in that class. But he became the president, student council president, and John and Barbara got married, he graduated, he became a dentist. Along the way, John became the president of the South Suburban Dental Society. He was on the board of directors of the Chicago Dental Society. He was being groomed to be the youngest president ever of the Chicago Dental Society, which is one of the most powerful dental societies in the country. John was on a path to, to uh, a, being a, a, a dentist, a successful dentist, and dental politics. But God had other plans, didn't he? As John used to like to say, something, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the country club. Well, Barbara got radically saved in a Bible study. John got saved soon after. The point is, is God put John and Barb in a place where they could be at their very best for him. And since that happened, and I'm so glad I'm sharing this on graduation Sunday, Literally thousands, tens of thousands of people have been touched by the ministry of Spirit of God Fellowship and Restoration Ministries of which they started. Aren't you glad that John and Barb obeyed God? Amen. Spirit of God Fellowship started as a Bible study in John and Barbara's basement. It was 1972. The church is 40 seven years old. It's an incredible story. Barbara wrote a book called God's Ground Force. It's the story of our church. If you're a visitor here this morning, Mary Crowley will be in the back. We have a gift for you. In that gift bag is Barbara's book. It's the story of this church. You need to read it. It's a miracle. And then in January of 2017, John Sullivan, the only pastor we knew, the only pastor we had, probably the only pastor we ever wanted, was diagnosed with a rare stomach cancer. 
And by March of that year, the church prayed and fasted and believed and hoped. But by March of that year, he was getting weaker. So I was in a meeting with John Russell, myself, Barb Whitlock. And at that meeting in March of 2017, it was a Monday, I can't remember what the date was. John dismissed Barb Whitlock, the meeting was over. And then he turned to John and I and he said, I'm stepping down as pastor of this church. And Brian, you're taking over. You're going to pastor the church. And by the way, I'm announcing it in two nights. I said, first of all, uh, you're not serious. And then I said, he said, no, I'm serious. And then I said, no, 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 no. I said something else too, but I can't repeat that word in church. <laughs> but he said, no. God's got a place for you, Brian. You and the leadership of this church, you're going to take this church to a different place. I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. John was in shock, right? We had to get out of there. I went home. I told my wife, we're in shock. Two days later, I thought, I got to talk to him. So on Wednesday, I went into his office. And we just had a wonderful time. I don't want to tell you what was said in that meeting. It was just incredible. We had known each other for over 40 years. He was my closest friend, my mentor, my hero. And I needed to say some things to him. And he said some things to me, and he prayed for me. And he said, don't worry. God's got this. This church is going to go to a different place. In a million trillion years, I would never have thought I'd be pastoring a church. It was like a joke to me. But I'm honored and humbled to have been asked by John to do this. God changed my road again, to say the least. And so here we are, almost two years later, and has God been good to us? Amen? Now, we've made some changes. I want to talk about those changes. It's amazing when you look back on a year and a half, the changes that we've made. The first change was a big change. We went to a Sunday service. We hadn't had a Sunday service in 40-some years. We went to a Sunday service. I know that some here this morning weren't crazy about that change, but I think we can all agree, I love coming to church on Sunday mornings now. It's fantastic. It's great. We shortened the service. We used to meet for an hour and a half. We thought, nope, we're going to shorten the service. We, we want to have a service that is conducive to visitors so that they're not always checking their watches out. So we shortened the service. By the way, we made another change. I don't know if you caught it, but we used to have a sign out there that said Fellowship Hall. It now says Spirit of God Fellowship Church. And then we thought, well, we need to remodel this church. We, 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 this church has been the same for since 1990. And so we thought, let's remodel this church. We opened the great awakening coffee shop where you can get the best cup of coffee in the area. And uh, aren't you glad that we read this church is looking pretty good, right? But I, I think it's time that we publicly thank somebody. We needed somebody to, 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 to handle the contractors. We needed somebody to deal with the big things and the little things and the timelines and everybody's issues and, and, and make this place what it is today. So I, we need to publicly thank Jeff Courtney, who, who, got, who got in there. And did such a phenomenal job. And then one morning I was driving to work and I thought, Wait, what in the world is our sister church? The spirit of God, what is it? Go, Paula, say it. Say it again. Okay, because I, I won't get it right. But I thought to myself, what are they doing worshiping down the street at some other church? And I thought, that ain't happening. So I went to jo uh, Joe and Paul, and I, I said, you know, this is going to change. So anyway, to make a long story short, we moved another change. We moved our sister church, our Spirit of God Hispanic Church, 
on our campus and they're now meeting in their new place. That's another change. It's another change. We made another change. We used to have kids' church twice a Sunday. It was great. But we thought, no, we want to have kids' church just once a month. We want to focus on it. We want to make it a fantastic service. And it, we are really unique. If you're visitors here this morning, once a month we have a service devoted to kids and their families and puppets and skits and all kinds of stuff. And we have a great community meal. I think it's so cool. We're committed to that once a month Sunday. The rest of the Sundays, of course, we have adult uh, services. I'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, we hired our very own Cassie Russell to direct Kids Church, and she's done a great job. I, I don't see Cassie here this morning, but she's doing a great job. And then we decided, let's start a Sunday school. These are changes, you guys. It's good to talk about this stuff sometimes. We decided to start a Sunday school. And we decided to have the Sunday school meet at the same time as our church meets. Our idea was we need new families. What a great thing to have a family come in and, and dump their, I mean, drop their kids off at, at, at I'm sorry, I, I, I meant drop their kids off at Sunday school. <laughs> and did I, I, I drop their kids off at Sunday school, come over, have a great cup of coffee, enjoy an adult service, pick their kids back up, and for you dads, get back in time to see the Bears win, right? Especially today, Stu and Body. <laughs> They're Minnesota fans. I want to thank Sue Russell and the dedicated teachers that give up their Sunday services to teach our kids. Can I get an amen on that? And then we made another big change. We hired a new worship leader. And oh, am I happy. Oh, are we blessed that Dan and Ashley Whiteman heard God say, I want to move you for a time where you can be at your very best at this little church in South Holland. Aren't you glad that they heard God? <laughs> and then another little change that you probably don't know about. It's good to do these things. I was always a man under authority. I was always under John's authority. I was always accountable to him. He was my mentor. And I thought to myself, after he passed, I thought, I, I need to be a man under authority. That's a good thing. So I prayed about it. And uh, it was obvious to me that I needed to submit myself to Charles Simpson. Wonderful man. Charles has a great history with our church. I ran it by the leadership. I ran it by my wife. I ran it by Barb. And they all agreed. And so I submitted my life to Charles Simpson about six months ago. He's my pastor. Now, let me make this clear to you. I did not submit, we did not submit the church to Charles. He's my pastor. He's there, so in the unlikely event, event that I get goofy or crazy on you, you know who to go to. I'm being serious. He's protection for me. He's protection for this church. Changes. And now here is the result. Since 2017, since September of 2017, when we started our Sunday service, our attendance on Sunday morning is up almost 40%. Can I get an amen on that? Let's give God the glory for that. And so where do we go in 2019? I have a three-year plan. We have a three-year plan and leadership. I have some things in my mind for five years. But we don't worry about three years and five years right now. I just want to share with you what our focus is for 2019. Three things, quickly. Sunday service. We want to continue to focus on this Sunday service. Yeah, it's going pretty good. But we want to continue to focus on it. We want this to always be a place where you can take anybody to it, you can take any friend to it, and anybody who walks in those doors, I don't care what you've done, you will feel loved and accepted in this Sunday service. That is a focus. That's something that we want to continue to do. This place 
always needs to be a grace-filled place. And we're going to stay focused on that. If we continue to be a church that serves together, if we continue to be a church that connects together, if we continue to be a church that celebrates together through anointed worship, we're not doing a lot of worship this morning, it's just kind of one of those Sundays, but we need to continue to celebrate together. I'm telling you, we're going to continue to see souls saved. And isn't that what it's all about? Secondly, we want to stay laser focused on children's ministry. We need new families. We need to stay focused on our Sunday school. Right now we're ministering to, I think, 15 to 20 kids. That's fantastic. That's a great start. And we hope that that will continue to grow in the years to come as we stay focused on that. We need to stay committed, and we're going to stay committed to an exciting, fresh kids' church service that first Sunday of the month. And my goal, our goal, is to very shortly start a junior high youth group. Very important. Got to start somewhere. And very soon after that, we hope to have a high school youth group. We're just rebuilding from the ground up. That's where we're heading when it comes to children's ministry. And then lastly, small groups. We haven't had small groups in years. We were in a different time. But small groups are on the horizon. We are going to start them on January the 18th. Uh, we had 130 people, I believe, sign up. That's fantastic. If you didn't sign up, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's just we're, we're going to have these for a while, and, and when the time comes that you feel you can be a part of it, that's great. Small groups are going to be a safe place where you can just have a cup of coffee together, have prayer together. We're working on a video series that we can all do together, and hopefully in the next week or two you'll be hearing if you signed up from your, um, your host couple. Adult service kids' ministry, children's ministry, and small groups. That's 2019. That's the road ahead. This church has always been a church that believes that God is the God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances, and so on. We will continue to be that type of church, but we need help. I don't know what road you're on this morning. I just told you the road ahead for this church. Dan, you want to bring the team up? I, but, but let me just, for two seconds, and then we're going to have a closing song and, and then have a cup of coffee. I don't know what brought you here this morning. Some of you are checking us out. Whatever road you're on, whatever church you go to, go to church. Doesn't have to be this one. But ask God, God, where can I be? What place do you have for me? What road do you have for me where I can be at my very, very best for you? I am not here, by the way, to judge you. I am not here to fix you. And I'm not here to change you. That's God's problem. We are here to be a place that loves you with the love of Jesus. And I hope that individuals here this morning that might be searching for that road, maybe this is the place that you come alongside us on this journey that we're on, because I'm telling you, as John Sullivan told me, the best years of this church are yet to come. Can I get an amen? Lord, I thank you so much. Thank you for this church. I thank you for the individuals here this morning. I thank you for Graduation Sunday. What a blessing to see four wonderful children of yours not complete their journey, but just take another step in their journey with you. Graduated. And now, Lord, they're going to be on a road. And I pray for these four that you would put them in a place where they can be at their very, very best for you. I thank you for this church. I thank you for every person here this morning. I pray a blessing on our lives here represented this morning, and I pray for this church in 2019 
that we would see souls come to know you. I pray, Lord, that you give us wisdom as a church. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you unite us like never before. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen.